Our gospel reading today comes to us from John's gospel, the 16th chapter. Listen now for the word of the Lord. Jesus is speaking. And he says, I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth, for he will not speak it on his own, but will speak whatever he hears And he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. This is the word of the Lord. Be to God. So today we uh, continue our sermon series on the six great ends of the church. We started last week, um, and, and we were, last week was Pentecost Sunday. Today is Trinity Sunday, but on Pentecost Sunday, it was, some people consider that to be the birthday of the church. That was when the Holy Spirit came down upon the followers of Christ and empowered them to be the church together. And so it's a good time for us to be considering why church uh, you know, what? if we follow Jesus, why, why do we also have to, you know, get together and, and work together and pray together and worship together? What, what is it that church does together that is hard for the believers to do or, or impossible maybe for the believers to do apart? And so last week, uh, well, and, and so our tradition, uh, the Presbyterian Church, we have what we call the six great ends. This is in our book of of order, which is our church's constitution. These are the six main reasons that we understand for church, why the church exists. And last week we looked at uh, number one, which was the proclamation of the gospel for the salvation of humankind, right? That, that the gospel is the salvation of all humanity, and ours is to go and share uh, that with the world. So today uh, we're looking at number four. Four. Now, don't adjust your dial. Um, for younger folks, TVs had dials, not buttons. For older folks, no, I'm not too young to know that and remember that. Uh, but we're looking at number four. We're skipping ahead a little bit. We'll go back and do number two and three later. Uh, but, but number four is the preservation of the truth. The preservation of the truth. Generations ago, when the Bible was only written really in either Hebrew, Greek, or then maybe Latin or something uh, like that, for generations, hundreds of years, the Word of God was passed down by those whose only job in life, other than praying, was rewriting the Scriptures and rewriting the Scriptures and rewriting the Scriptures. Can you imagine? In those times, only educated folk could read and write, right? And educated meant that you were uh, very wealthy and and, and possibly, you know, a a ruler or royalty, or it often meant that you were clergy, that you were a priest uh, or a monk uh, or or something of, of that office. And oftentimes, those people, their one of their main roles was just to rewrite the Bible. So the word would not be lost. The truth would not be forgotten. And I love that image, that idea that the church today doesn't exist just for us today. Certainly, we want to share the truth that we know with the rest of the world, but it is a truth that we continue to pass on and pass down and preserve for the well-being, the goodness, and the salvation of future generations. To me, that's an inspiring image, and that is one of the reasons for church. So if we are saying that we're going to preserve the truth and we're going to, and we're going to share the truth uh, with others, then what do we mean by truth? Um, one of my favorite passages in John is the interaction between Jesus and Pontius Pilate. Maybe you remember this interaction, but they have a little conversation about truth. Um, Pilate says to Jesus, so you are a king? 
And, and Jesus responds, well, you say that I'm a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. That's what Jesus says. And Pilate responds, what is truth? Pilate is a something, uh, I guess, of a philosophical man, but, uh, but, but a very practical man. And he's caught in a rough spot, if you remember the story, in the, between his Roman bosses and the Jewish council. And so he's really not interested in what Jesus has to teach him. He's not interested in the truth that is Jesus, and so he misses that truth. And Jesus himself has said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And so, friends, truth is not a fact. And it's less a series of facts as much as truth is the personhood of Jesus Christ. Now let's wrap our minds around that for a minute or two. Truth is a person. And it's also, it is also in our efforts to understand what Jesus was and is and has done for us. And we as a church, we seek that truth and we seek to share that. We seek to pass it down to, to, to future generations and we seek to share it with the rest of the world even as we try to understand what it means. A uh, theologian many centuries ago coined the phrase faith-seeking understanding. Anselm said that. And the idea is that we believe and we, we know what Jesus has done for us and we seek to understand what we believe and what it means. And understanding can be hard, right? Because the truth around us seems to change, doesn't it? Uh, what we view as healthy can change, can't it? I mean, think about foods, right? Foods that, that uh, you know, one minute we'll be told this is a healthy food, we should eat a lot of it, or a healthy, uh, you know, supplement, we should, we should take certain amounts of it. And then, and then we'll, there'll be another study that'll come back and, and seem to contradict that, right? Or generations ago, you know, people thought that tobacco and alcohol had medicinal qualities, right? These things change, as we learn and as we understand better, diet fads come and go. The truth seems to change around us and what stays true, even more so, in what seems to be a relative culture. Now what the world, the world don't move to the beat of just one drum, as I've heard. What might be right for you might not be right for some. You weren't expecting to hear the theme from different strokes when you came to church today, were you? Some of you perked up when I said that first line. I'm a child of the 80s, what can I say? But it is true that we have different experiences, different cultural backgrounds, different understandings, different perspectives, different tastes, different values. But is everything relative? Or is there something that is always true. In uh, my previous church setting, we had a Sunday school class where we read through the lectionary together, and, and we talked about it in terms of, of, of uppercase T truths and lowercase T truths, the capital T, big T truths, universal truths. What are they? And then, and then lowercase truths, like things that are true in our faith tradition, for instance the way that Presbyterians do things, but is that the only way you can do things and be faithful to Christ, right? That might be lowercase t things. Um, uppercase true, capital, you know, t capital T truth are things that don't change through the ages, that are always true and always will be true. Like the love of God for us shown in the embodied form of Jesus Christ. Or the truth that is the Holy Spirit within us that guides and directs us through every era and every age. 
Jesus talked about that spirit of truth. He said the spirit of truth, the Holy Spirit, comes and he will guide you into all the truth. He will glorify me. Who is the truth? Right? And the world desperately needs to hear and know the truth. The truth, the capital T, the uppercase T, truth, that is the love of God and the direction of the Holy Spirit. Because I think that most of us would agree that our world is sick and obsessed. Obsessed with power, obsessed with being right, obsessed with shaming our opponents, obsessed with money, obsessed with guns and weapons and violence, obsessed with pleasure of all forms, obsessed. We're also obsessed by convenience, by consumer goods that promise to solve problems we didn't know we had 30 seconds before the commercial break. Obsessed by world views and political views and social views that do come and go. Obsessed by being entertained. Obsessed by gossip and slander and the misfortune of others. We're obsessed with all that is unwholesome. And addicted to the buzz of our 24-hour news cycles and the buzzing alerts of our devices in our pockets, bringing it to us. But how much of that is the truth? I mean, there might be truth in some of that. There might be some truth in some of that. There might even be, you know, lowercase truth in much of that. But the truth, the truth is known in the personhood of God who became human. And in the church's, our, our humble attempts to understand what it is that God has done for us. This is the truth. On this Trinity Sunday, we think about the mystery that is one God and three persons. We say God, hero, Israel, right from the Old Testament. God is one the Lord your God is one. But then we also know that God is in three persons. And we see this in Scripture. And we see God in the form of the Father, God or Creator, and God in the form of the Son, and then God in the form of the Spirit. And we grasp to understand that. Again, that's that faith-seeking understanding. That, that we can have faith and know it's three in one. And we seek to understand it. And we seek to understand it through our scriptures and through traditions of theologians you know, and scholars passed down through the ages and the way that you and I speak of it and understand it to, together today. The truth is in Christ and it can only be known in the power of the Holy Spirit and in those learnings that we pass down from age to age and expand upon as we do. For as Paul said, and, and, and we heard Houston read a little bit ago, we even boast in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received re reconciliation. This reconciliation in Jesus, this is a truth. This is the truth. But even better, this is truth. And we can boast in this truth. We can rest assured, certain in this truth. And we can share it, share this truth with the world. So on a day that we're here considering God's truth, I, I don't want it just to be full of, of, of me speaking. <laughs> I'd like to actually leave some room for God to speak some truth to us today. So, um, so if you will, would you, let, let's, let's give ourselves a little time to listen in silence. We don't do this very often in worship, but I think it's a good Sunday to do that. How can we speak the truth if we have not heard it uh, from our God? So um, let us just take a moment, take a deep breath and relax, exhale, and, and let's, let's turn to God in prayer. 
Lord, we, we do turn to you this morning, and we know the things, we know so many of the lessons that have been passed down through the ages, including your scriptures, that we know are your inspired word, and then all the, all the scholars and theologians and philosophers and teachers who have throughout the years um, studied your word and studied their experience of faith in you and, and have shared their wisdom. And so we receive that wisdom as a church, as a people. And we learn about your great love. And we seek to share that truth that is Christ within us. There's a spirit moving in this place. We seek to share it with the world. But we first, Lord, we first, Lord, seek the truth that you would speak to us today. And so, and so we wait and we sit and we listen for you. Speak, Lord, to our hearts, to our minds, to our spirits in this time and place. We thank you, Lord. We pray that we would continue to turn to you, to listen to you, and you would continue to speak to us as individual followers of your Son and as your church, empowered by your Spirit in this place and beyond. Amen. That was one minute of silence, by the way. If that seemed like uh, a really long time, let's practice silence more often. If that seemed like, a, like you, had, you could have sat there longer in silence, well, find some time to do that if you don't do it often enough. We can listen to the Lord. We can listen for the Lord and what each other have to say to us and in our faith tradition. But we certainly, certainly know who and what the truth is. The truth is our Savior Jesus Christ and the Spirit that leads and guides and directs us. Amen.